The following organizations have provided funding for this Into the Outdoors television series. Want to know what this is? It's water, of course, along the Wisconsin shoreline of Lake Michigan. But it's much more than that. You might not know this from where you're sitting, but north in the distance is the location of the proposed Wisconsin Shipwreck Coast National Marine Sanctuary. The proposed National Marine Sanctuary spans 962 square miles and includes 36 known shipwrecks and 60 unexplored potential shipwrecks. Why should you care? Put on your underwater gear and join us to find out. Grab your gear and let's explore. So what are National Marine Sanctuaries, and why should we care about them? National Marine Sanctuaries are underwater parks that protect America's most iconic natural and cultural marine resources, including coral reefs, marine animals, and shipwrecks. Plus, as you're about to discover, they give volunteers a chance to help protect planet Earth. How? Let's begin decoding that story in an unlikely place, usually blanketed in snow and ice. From a little girl selling lemonade on yeah. the street in Alpena in front of our house to... Making it big. I wasn't able to make it back for the volunteer ceremony, so they Skyped me in this award, the Volunteer of the Year for 2014. This really um, opened the door for me to go to Capitol Hill Ocean Week for the Young Leaders in Ocean Stewardship panel. Hannah McDonald, uh, who is the Volunteer of the Year for the Thunder Bay National Marine Sanctuary. Educating the youth and adults about how harmful microplastics are to our waters is very important. I got to be surrounded by the leaders in ocean conservation and marine stewardship. I got to do a toast to Sylvia Earle. She's such a role model. It was incredible. They put it on the screen for us there because we couldn't be there. It was quite a oh the, neat the chow. Yeah. yeah, it was quite a neat experience for our family. I really do believe that Ocean for Life, with their conservation focus, set me on track to become a marine steward. Yeah. I'm Hannah McDonald from Alpena, Michigan. I'm 17, and I'm currently standing on the Channel Islands National Marine Sanctuary. The Ocean for Life program is a National Marine Sanctuaries program that takes 15 Middle Eastern students and 15 American students to one of the National Marine Sanctuaries to educate them both on cultural understanding and most importantly, the interconnectedness of the ocean. Ocean for Life was my first experience really in the ocean itself. I got to snorkel Channel Islands National Marine Sanctuary in the kelp forest. I got to kayak in the National Marine Sanctuary as well along the beautiful Channel Islands. For me, National Marine Sanctuaries are much more than protected underwater parks. It's the National Marine Sanctuaries that have changed my life and set me on a career path that I am super passionate about and I'm in love with. I also think that being on the shore of one of the Great Lakes in the winter is such a unique experience. Hearing the water hit the ice is really awesome. You just don't get this kind of experience on the ocean, really, either. It's pretty unique. There's a picture of her holding her hand up to the glass and the dolphins on the other side of it. My story is, it's where it all started. As far as relationships go, the, her relationship with the environment, it's probably sort of her first love. I get emotional talking about it. It's a spiritual experience for me to wake up and see this massive body of water. It's just beautiful and you transcend it. It pulls you out into it and it makes everything else in your life small. And that's... Well said. Yeah, that's, that's what it is. It's, it's a spiritual experience and to not take care of it. And she makes me so proud. 
because she's doing a lot to try to take care of this plant. Sorry, <laughs> it's not stage. It's just not, but it's true. I love people live through you. They live through the kinds of things that you want to do. You're so passionate about about this planet. There's been so many times I've said to you, you're taking care of this big blue planet. It's going to be people like you that are going to do it. That your generation. It's like you're at the cutting edge and the last frontier to make a difference. I hope to show people that a girl from the Great Lakes went to university in the Midwest really can be interconnected with the ocean. We're all one, we're all connected. The Great Lakes eventually lead to the ocean. I kind of like to think of myself as just following the Great Lakes out to sea. The Great Lakes, I hope, understand that I'm in love with them, but I'm also in love with the ocean, and the ocean is being pressed with some really disastrous issues that need to be fixed. And I find my calling with helping preserve the ocean. Coming up, we shake off the cold and head south to the Florida Keys for more stories on America's national marine sanctuaries. Stay with us. Don't go away, there's more Into the Outdoors. Find more science smarts at intotheoutdoors.org. And now back, Into the Outdoors. As you're about to see, National Marine Sanctuaries can also provide the perfect setting for a variety of responsible recreational activities. We think you'll catch on pretty quickly. There's this great sequence that happens in tarpon fishing where you stalk a fish and you kind of do this nice gentle presentation until finally you kind of convince the fish to eat the fly and, and you've bested it. And the result is he gets really upset about it, he gets really mad. So he goes, shakes his head and he jumps in the air and he does these series of jumps and flips and just kind of on cue ejects the fly out of his mouth. That's the, the best part about tarpon fishing for me is, is witnessing the fish win. And my name is Will Benson. I'm a Florida Keys flats fishing captain, born and raised here in Key West, Florida. I've been a guide for 20 years and uh, hopefully I'll be a guide for another 20. I kind of grew up idolizing the fishing guides. You know, the way some people, you know, fall into their profession, you know, from being around it. I think I just uh, fell right into uh, the pinnacle of the sport, you know, fly fishing for tarpon and permit here in Sugarloaf. Today, like most mornings in the springtime, we headed out into the back country here in the Florida Keys National Marine Sanctuary and I went tarpon fishing. We had Steve Tripp, one of my longtime friends. I've been fishing with Steve for 15, 16 years now. So we're kind of old hands at this. It's a bit of a marriage of sorts, I guess, when you get with uh, clients you've been fishing with that long. It's kind of weird that a big old tarpon would eat that, isn't it? The biggest fish eats the littlest candy. <laughs> Guiding in the Florida Keys I think is, you know, it's a dream job, certainly a dream job of mine. You get to be outside every single day, hanging out with your, you know, buddies and friends, pursuing these, these fish in one of the greatest places on earth. It's, it's a joy, a blessing to, to be a guide down here. When you think about the fact that a guy can come out here on the water, and he can go catch and release fly fishing for tarpon, bonefish, and permit, and pay the mortgage and pay all the bills and put two kids through school here in the Florida Keys with a sustainable industry. I think it's in the sanctuary's interest to make sure that that stays the case. If we can't have it sustainable, then the jobs go away. So the sanctuary really comes in to make sure uh, to guarantee that the value that our community has with this ecosystem remains uh, you know, steadfast and, and into the future for my kids and, and future generations. Oftentimes you find it's the hunters and the fishermen and the folks that are out there, you know, pursuing the game in those places that have the most respect for them. And I can absolutely say 100% without a doubt that that is the case here in the National Marine Sanctuary in the Florida Keys. Now 2017 was uh, undoubtedly a, 
a hard year for the Florida Keys. But with dedicated, resilient, and passionate people like Will investing their time and their passion and their energy, the Keys have already started bouncing back. Tonight, I would like to recognize Captain Will Benson from the Florida Keys National Marine Sanctuary as our Volunteer of the Year. Being from Florida, it's been a culture of ours to kind of care about the environment. And so we decided to craft a, a program that capitalized on the passion and the love that fishing guides uh, have for that resource and to channel it towards a sustainable future where we're partnering together with the sanctuary. And, and just for a moment, guys, think about some hundred some odd fishing guides uh, who are <laughs> collectively individual spirits in their own right, not necessarily wanting to be told what to do, to voluntarily come together uh, and partner with a government organization to create a sustainable future. Uh, that's a big deal. We have a responsibility to the next generation to you know, lift up and to make things better. And that's really where I think the source of my commitment to this sanctuary and to the Blue Star Fishing Guide program has come from is that every time that my young son Luke says, you know, Dad, I want to go fishing, I want to catch tarpon, I'm reminded that, you know, uh, I better do my part now to make sure that that future is available for him if he decides to be a fishing guide. And it's that optimism that, that I think that I've had from having children and from thinking about the future that's led to this Blue Star Fishing Guide program. It's who we are. You know, all of the, that lifestyle, that identity that we get, you know, our, we make our money from the water, we have our days off on the water, our kids are out on the water. This is who we are in the Florida Keys. So, you know, the fishery and the health of this ecosystem is, is absolutely central to us as a community. Let's leave Florida's warming waters as we head next to the Pacific Northwest for a heartwarming story. Don't miss it. Don't go away. There's more Into the Outdoors. Find more science smarts at intotheoutdoors.org. And now back Into the Outdoors. Unfortunately, plastics like this litter the beaches and shorelines across the country. So what can we do about this problem? Plenty, as you're about to see in a story of innovation and courage. I literally woke up my wife in the middle of the night, which is not uncommon. Right. <laughs> and I just said, hey, I'm, I got this idea. You know, I think somebody should do this. Yeah. What if we did this? Mm -hmm. You know, what if doing something was better than doing nothing? So my name's Chris Moriarty, and this is my wife, Laura. And we were actually the founders of the Million Waves Project. With Million Waves Projects, our plan is to try to reclaim as much ocean plastic as possible. And then we actually convert that ocean plastic into filament for 3D printers and then we use those 3D printers to print limbs. Kind of taking two different concepts, bringing them together to solve uh, two problems at once. We're obviously not the first people who thought about cleaning up the oceans, and we're not the first people who thought about making limbs cheaply for kids and adults who need them, but pretty much one of the first groups to decide to actually bring those two ideas together to try to do as much good as possible. Abby is a wonderful little girl. She was born with congenital deformity, so she doesn't have function of her right hand, but is very capable and is amazing <laughs> what the, she can do. I'm really crazy and I'm like jumping around and climbing trees and I like doing gymnastics and like flipping around. I really like to go to the beach and go swimming, doing flips off docks. Uh, everyone's kind of got dealing with their own issues and some children like the attention, some certainly do not. The last thing they want to talk about is maybe why they're different. And Abby, I mean, if you spend any time with her, she could care less. You know what I mean? <laughs> She's just living her life and doing things and I think uh, it motivates me. If I were to make the prosthetic do anything, maybe to like hang on to something where it wouldn't come off without it like breaking. She's really helped inform the projects. She tries things on. She tells us if they're cool or not cool, if they fit, if they don't fit. So it's been phenomenal and her mom is amazing and has been also kind of informing, you know, the directions that we should go and, and how to navigate the population of limb different kids. Ever since Abby was born, we never, we never treated her different family. Everybody just looked at her like a normal kid with two hands and 
she's a very strong, independent child. And so she just grew up thinking, well, I can do everything. And it's her personality to really conquer everything she does. She wants to be the best. She's really taught us so much about being courageous and being brave. Our family loves to go to the ocean. And now being part of Million Waves, we're every time we're at the ocean and we see garbage in the water, the kids want to get it out. And it's been, it's been really cool how that's impacted them. The part of the project that I've enjoyed the most is probably for every person that reaches out to us for help, uh, we probably get at least at least a dozen yeah, people asking how they can help. So we kind of have this this best side of humanity on display for us every day. Mm -hmm. And of course, events like this and partnerships like this, it brings it all right in front of you. I think the sanctuary system to us is probably going to be our number one vehicle mm -hmm. to where when all the people ask us what they can do, that's the first place they can go. Because given the fact that there's so many, and there's such a variety of different places that they're protecting and all the ecology around it, people want to do something a little bit more active. So having the sanctuary systems available and so well run as they are, mm -hmm. uh, it's easy for people to get involved and right. go out and put an event together. And, uh, and again, just make their dent. Right now we're really focusing on events like this and coordinating with volunteers that are already out on the beaches pulling the refuse off. We really want to stick to our core mission of using reclaimed ocean plastics. So we are, you know, in partnership with the Washington Coast Savers and the Sanctuary System to potentially, you know, kind of streamline a system to where we're collecting things that they're picking up that we can use. Washington Coast Savers is a nonprofit formed by many community groups who are dedicated to protecting the coastline and getting marine debris off of the shorelines. We're all connected by the current, so we have to make sure we do the right thing and try to clean up the beaches as best as possible. It's stories like this that really make a difference to me because we get to see how, how we can make a difference and we still have hope and that we can do things that not only good for the environment but good for people. I'm very proud to be part of this. Being involved with Million Waves changed me by I never thought I would need a prosthetic. But once I got started with this, I realized that it was really cool to have one. They're just picking up plastic and then they can turn it into something that could help somebody. I bet by now you're wondering, what can I do to help our oceans and Great Lakes? Before you think you're too young or too old, you better watch this next story. Don't go away, there's more Into the Outdoors. Find more science smarts at intotheoutdoors.org. And now back, Into the Outdoors. Our beaches, either on the Great Lakes or along the coast, are in fact part of local watersheds, which are connected to National Marine Sanctuary waters. Keeping the watersheds where you live healthy, in turn, helps keep the ocean and the Great Lakes healthy too. Ocean Guardian Schools provide students, teachers, and parents with opportunities to help promote conservation in their local communities. How? I thought you'd never ask. Let's roll that final story. So this beach used to be covered with ice plant, but it's an invasive here and it took over and we saw our habitat disappear. We saw our snowy pulvers disappear. We saw our bush bunnies and our burrowing owls disappear. And the beach suffered from great erosion and floods and sand was carried away from this habitat. This is my classroom, third grade students from Galt, that are part of a five year legacy where we have claimed this beach, this habitat, as part of our community. And we are connected to it, and we're practicing stewardship today. The NOAA Ocean Guardian School Program is really an opportunity to have kids out in the environment doing hands-on projects that are really stewardship based. So the kids are learning by doing, working with their hands, and conserving our beautiful area like this, the Monterey Bay National Marine Sanctuary. One of the projects that we're looking at right now is the kids are actually planting native dune plants, restoring a beach dune system that was degraded with invasive plants, and they're taking the time to learn why they're doing this. We're teaching kids that through doing these conservation projects and these stewardship projects, they're actually helping to protect the ocean. My name is Gianna, and I'm an ocean guardian and why I love being an ocean guardian is because I really like saving sea animals, but what I don't like is if there's a bunch of plastic, that's 
not what I like to see. This is a great example of really connecting kids and showing them that by doing and by creating opportunities for them to actually get into their own community and restoring degraded dune systems, that they can help protect our natural resources and our sanctuary resources. These kids, right here, these kids are actually protecting Monterey Bay National Meat Sanctuary resources. So we came from Galt School so we could do this. Kind of We're just planting native plants and taking out the ice plant. The ice plant doesn't really have any nutrients for other plants. It's pulling all the water out. A local community partner that actually works all up and down the coast here in California that really helps support the school in terms of the science behind it is Groundswell. Getting kids involved in changing their environment for the better is, there's never been a more important time. I mean, we are facing changes on a global scale at an unprecedented rate. And so involving students in even small changes gets them in that mindset that, that they can make a change. And then having that connection, that sense of place, having that place-based awareness to their backyard, I think making that connection is very important. One of our partner organizations that we're working with, and we really couldn't run the program without their support, is the National Marine Sanctuary Foundation. And we've been partnering with them to look to expand this program, because right now we are limited in some of the areas that we can serve, and working with the foundation in close partnership, they are helping to support us to expand it nationwide. We'd love to see this program into more schools, into more regions, into more states across our country. They're working together for one cause and it's bigger than just themselves and so they're connecting to things that are important and it has relevance and it has meaning for them and they're seeing that education goes outside the classroom and it can be fun to learn and to get ideas and then to make something happen. We're grateful to Ocean Guardian for being the leaders and teaching people that you don't have to wait for someone else to create change. Um, but they gave us the platform, the opportunity, and it's been an awesome experience. I think we're changing kids' lives. They want to know how to fix this environment. They hear the stories and they want to know how they can change it. And we're giving these kids the opportunity to have their environmental voice. I hope that the ocean can get cleaner and I hope that from our class doing it that other people realize how important it is and I hope that other people will become ocean guardians too. One of the greatest things about this program is that we're always trying to make the link between education and resource protection and this program has really done that. We're seeing now that with the hard work of kids and getting them involved and the continued work that they are able to provide, that we're seeing these native dune ecosystems return to their natural habitat. And because of that, we have two threatened and endangered species that have returned to these ecosystems, the snowy plover and the burrowing owl. And this is the first time that we've actually been able to link an education program with actually protecting the environment. So we're seeing it, these kids are doing it. We are Ocean Guardians! As you've seen, National Marine Sanctuaries offer everyone the chance to help protect our Great Lakes and oceans for the future. Explore these websites to find out more about our National Marine Sanctuaries and how you can make a difference. You'll discover a number of ways to support ocean and Great Lakes conservation no matter where you live. See you next time, hopefully on a shoreline somewhere, as we dive further into the outdoors. organizations have provided funding for this Into the Outdoors television series.